Though I had an interesting failure. I was uh, attempting to print the back for my jumbo walking drone project here. And uh, the extruder cooling fan failed. And of course, once that failed, the heat crept up. And the plastic, the PET, melted inside the, the tube, jammed it. And once it jammed, then this was where it was at. And this was a, obviously a lot of printing time I didn't want to waste. So what I did was when I'd removed it from the bed, which by the way, again, beautiful print, no lifting or warping anywhere. This is using glue stick on the glass. Uh, I measured it with a micrometer and it was exactly 19 millimeters tall. So then I went back into my uh, slicing program, loaded the original STL file, and sliced off the bottom 19 millimeters of the file, and then not sliced as in preparing it for the machine, but sliced as cut, removed the bottom 19 millimeters of the STL file. Then sliced for the printer the remaining whatever that was of the file as a new file. And let's see, here it is over here. And printed, uh, printed just what was missing. And just as we would all hope, Again, kind of tough doing this one-handed here and keeping the camera aimed at anything. But it's going to fit perfectly, so I'll just glue that back on. Like once you line it up, the seam pretty much disappears. I'll glue that back on and I'll have a back that I can then put onto the back of my robot. There's a there's a door hatch in there too, and the same same thing at door hatch prints at the same time, even though it's a separate part. But it stopped at the same place, so I printed what was remaining of the door hatch, and it'll just get glued on there also. Of course, once you have the, the major jam, I uh, first thing, I tried a few things at first. I tried spinning the little fan to get it going again, and it, it would turn by hand, but it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't run. As we know on a CR-10, anytime the power's on, that little fan's running. So... What I found was on my machine anyway, the tolerance between the metal that used to be across here, they had a fan shroud, and the end of the fan itself was so tight that you, really, you couldn't slip even a piece of paper between the two of them. And uh, enough dust bunnies apparently had gotten sucked in there and swirled around the center that it was uh, keeping the fan from, from running. So. I just removed that fan shroud. I could have spaced the fan in with washers, but I would screw it. I really don't like fan shrouds anyway. They add noise and they cut down. They restrict the airflow. And there's no way you're going to hurt yourself by touching it. So I got rid of the fan shroud on there. Of course, I had to uh, had a heck of a time taking everything apart since it was so jammed up. But once I got everything off, cut the tube off, had to cut off that much of the tube, reloaded it. And if I also took that moment to uh, replace this coupler back here with a new one that arrived, so now I don't have any any more slop like you do with the ones that come with the CR10s. So the retractions are are working right now. Put it all back together and printed that out last part. So I just thought I'd give you guys an update that if you do have a a failure on a on a print that you've got a lot of time or a lot of material invested in. If it's due to a jam, you don't have to throw the part away. Just measure it with your micrometer, open the original STL file back up, remove how much of it from that file that you know did print, and just print what's left. You know, re-slice what's left and give it a print. My, my hardest part will be uh, gluing this on. You can't really glue. This is only 10% infill. It's not a lot of surface to put glue on. Of course, the outer edge, I have plenty of surface to put glue on. I think I'll be fine. We'll give it a shot.